Okay. Here we go. Ready? Hey, Keenan. Good to see you, Mark. All right, I will call to order the regular meeting of the Batavia City Council for Monday, March 1st, 2021. And uh, we're going to do this, some of us here and some of us on screen, but uh, we have, the, I think the majority will do a roll call here in just a minute. But I would like to ask everyone to please rise for a brief invocation to be followed by the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight, uh, we want to uh, express our hopes and prayers and blessings uh, for a variety of topics. Uh, first of all, we hope that the continuation of the uh, overcoming the pandemic and all the issues surrounding it uh, moves forward at a very fast pace. And we are thankful for all the progress that we've seen occur in the last several weeks. Tonight also, we want to remember Alderman Callahan and his family on the loss of his nephew this past week. And we just ask that a special blessing be showered upon him. And tonight, I'd also like to take a moment to offer a word of tribute to William Rosenfelder, who uh, for many years was the uh, fire chief in Geneva, but during his tenure there, he had a very vibrant role in uh, kind of upgrading fire service in the region, including uh, the creation of the TRICOM Dispatch Center, and certainly the first steps of consolidating the fire and the ambulance services between the Tri-Cities. And he left a very positive mark on the world around him, and so we ask for a special blessing to be showered upon him tonight on his passing this past week. Also tonight, we ask for direction and guidance and understanding as we ask for the issues and act on the issues before us on the agenda. And we know that in the hearts and minds of each alderman here, they are voting for the, what they feel is in the best interest of Batavia and its future. Also, we want to remember those from our community who are serving in foreign soil in a disturbed world around us. And we just ask that a special blessing be showered upon each one of these men and women as they go about their vital mission in defending the liberties of the United States of America. Uh, we just ask for ourselves tonight for uh, understanding and direction and vision and ideas as we move forward in trying to make Batavia the great and grand place it is. And continue the idea that Batavia has always been a city with a very big heart. We ask for all these blessings. Amen. And I will lead the Pledge of Allegiance, I think, just because it's hard, easier to do it, I think. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, with justice, and for all. Everybody be seated. Yes, City Clerk, please call the roll. <coughs> Miller? Here. Rosado? Here. Beck? Here. Knopp? Here. Chansett? Here. Wolf? Here. Barron? Here. O'Brien? Here. Callahan? Meitzler? Here. Malay? Here. 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 Cerrone? McFadden? Here. 12 present, two absent. So we have the necessary quorum to conduct business. Uh, on our agenda, I'd like to read the following announcements that we do as a precursor to the actual. It says, to participate in the live meeting, use the webinar link below to register for the event at registration link. And I'm not going to read all that. Uh, I think it's probably going to be on the screen there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will need to provide your name and email address. Mm -hmm. Residents can listen by phone to the City Council meeting by dialing 312-626-6799 and use the webinar ID 924-8790-3653. The webinar passcode is 241-862. Dial-in calls are unable to ask questions. Questions will be asked prior to the meeting that are emailed in. Uh, to uh, public comment at cityofbatavia.net. For viewing purposes only, the meeting will be broadcast live on BATV's YouTube channel, which can be accessed from your website at, my B, B, my, at mybatv.com uh, or at uh, www.youtube.com slash user slash batv1017. 
Uh, and uh, so if, hopefully if anybody's out there and had the desire to watch or listen, maybe you can pick up on what we've just said and do it. Uh, we've gone through item one and two, and we've gone through the roll call. So I'd just like to remind everyone, please speak into the microphones because this is being recorded and will be rebroadcast by BATV. And do we have any items tonight to be removed, added, or changed on the agenda? Alderman Chancet, do we have anything? Your Honor, I'm aware of none. Okay. Okay, moving then to item six, which is the presentation of the consent agenda. Alderman Chancet, as Chairman of Governmental Services Committee, would you present this, please? Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> The consent agenda reads as follows. To accept and place on file the committee of the whole minutes for February 2nd, 2021. Approvals, the February 19th, 2021 payroll in the amount of $972,538.08. The accounts payable check register in the amount of $3,082,219.15. City Council minutes for February 15th, 2021. Ordinance 21-15, Amendment to the Comprehensive uh, Land Use Map 106 to 110 North Redan Road, City of Batavia Applicant. Ordinance 21-16, Amendment to the Official Zoning Map 106 to 110 North Redan Road, City of Batavia Applicant. Ordinance 21-17, Amendment to the Comprehensive Plan Land Use Map, map uh, 1320 uh, Killian Drive, 1728 uh, Weisbrook Lane, uh, 1007 Edward Drive, 700 Norcross Drive, City of Batavia, applicant. Um, uh, Ordinance 21-18, amendment to the official zoning map, uh, 1320 Killian Drive, 1728 Weisbrook Lane, uh, 1007 uh, Edwards Drive, 700 Norcross Drive, City of Batavia Applicant. Resolution 21-20-R, authorizing uh, rescind of the MFT fund expenditure for the 2020 resurfacing program in the amount of 1,475,000. Resolution 21-21-R, authorizing using local fund for the 2020 resurfacing program in the amount of uh, 1,448,000. $947 and one cent. Uh, resolution 21-22-R authorizing uh, BLR 14-220 uh, to allocate 1.4 uh, million to the NFT um, funds towards the Main Street reconstruction project. Uh, resolution 20-13 IDOT um, resolution for construction on uh, State Highway and Ordinance 21-20, amending the 2021 Wage and Salary Ordinance. Resolution 21-24-R, um, IPBC removal of subpool and becoming an individual entity. Your Honor, I would move that we approve the consent agenda as read. Second, Knopp. Moved by Alderman Chancet, second by Alderman Knopp for the approval of the consent agenda as read. Any discussion? Ask the clerk then to please call the roll. Chancet? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Meitzler? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. Motion is approved by a vote of 12 yes, no no's, two absent. Okay, moving then to item seven, matters from the public for items not on the agenda. Do we have anybody this evening? Uh, we have one uh, participant from the public. Um, there is no hand up. To okay. Speak. All right, uh, item number eight, which is supposed to be a presentation and on the Batavia Toy Drive by Roy and Brittany Bailey. Are, they weren't sure they were gonna make it tonight, so. Okay. Yeah, I, they're not here tonight. All right. And then item number nine, which is the Batavia Chamber of Commerce. And I talked to them earlier today, and they were having some issues, too. So I, th I think Margaret's here. here. Margaret. Is Margaret here? Yep. Margaret, are you there? She's muted right now. Self-muted. Can you unmute, Margaret? Margaret. <laughs> 
Okay, sorry about that. I was having m mouse trouble at the last minute. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. Yes. Great, great. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for letting me join your meeting tonight. Let me turn, I can turn my camera on now that I got my mouse working. Okay, there we go. Now we can see hey. you. Good, thanks. Good evening. Hey, the chamber is continuing to be a catalyst for business prosperity and enhancing the economic vi viability in the community by advocating for building relationships with and educating our members for the benefit of the community. We are pleased again this year to offer four scholarships to a Batavia High School student, a BPS 101 senior. Each scholarship is worth $500 and we have four categories to reward the, the hardworking seniors. Inspiring entrepreneurship, inspiring women in business, inspiring career and technical achievers, and inspiring contributors to a Batavia Chamber business. Applications are due Friday, April 30th, and you can find more information about our scholarships online. So please share that information with any senior that would like to take advantage of those opportunities. I wanna remind you that we're still offering Chamber Bucks, even though the holidays are over, Chamber Bucks still are great gifts that can be given for anniversaries, birthdays, teacher gifts, or to say thank you to a neighbor. This is a great way to keep our money local and the Chamber started offering that just this past year. So we're proud to, to, to give that to our community. The Chamber is helping to support the Support Our Batavia restaurants and we side with Batavia restaurant promotion. The um, restaurants that are featured this week that I would like you to dine in or carry out is Windmill Grill and Pizzeria, Batavia Creamery, Bulldog Red Hots, North Island Deli, Peppies and enticing cuisine. Make sure you let them know which side of the river you are from. Uh, Align the lines with restaurants. We are also preparing for Restaurant Madness again this year. We've tweaked it a little bit. It's gonna be a two week long promotion this year. It will be uh, March 14th through the 18th and March 22nd through the 25th. You should have received your coupon with the Neighbors Magazine mailer this weekend. Use that coupon uh, as many times as you'd like and you'll get 10% off your bill and also a coupon from the restaurant to use again at a future date in April. The Chamber is also offering many educational and networking opportunities with virtual op options to help support our businesses. We are continuing to provide many webinars for our, for our members so they can be informed and educated on what resources are available to them. We have a lot of upcoming events. On Wednesday, March 3rd at 8 a.m., we have our not-for-profit forum. That is our, um, our forum that meets to help support not-for-profit leaders in our community. On Wednesday, March 3rd at 10 a.m., we have our 2021 Economic Outlook presentation presented by the Executive Vice President of the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. On Thursday, March 4th at 9 a.m., we have our Chamber Boot Camp Series. This one will be focused on LinkedIn and it'll help you to help customers find you using LinkedIn. On Friday, March 5th at 10.30 a.m., we have our first ribbon cutting of the year. At, no, actually, I'm sorry. It's our second ribbon cutting of the year at, ribbon, at Windmill Grill and Pizzeria, the restaurant we've been all anxiously awaiting to open. On Monday, March 8th at 4 p.m., we have our Wellbeing Webinar Series called Wellbeing Webinar Self-Care Isn't Selfish. On Wednesday, March 10th at 8 a.m., we have our BC Squared, our Batavia Chamber Breakfast Club Morning Networking, which is open to everyone. On Wednesday, March 10th at 11.30 a.m., we will have our vaccination updates for businesses with the Kane County Department of Health with Deputy Director Michael Isaacson, the Assistant Director, I'm sorry. He will provide a 30-minute presentation regarding the vaccine and then have 15 minutes of open question and answers. On Wednesday, March 10th at 7 p.m., we will have our Batavia Aldermanic Candidates Forum with the League of Women's Voters. That will be aired on YouTube. On Thursday, March 11th at 9 a.m. will be our Chamber Bootcamp Series Week 8 Permission-Based Selling. On Thursday, March 11th at 4.30, we will have our Batavia Women in Business After, after Hours Networking. Our partner charity will be Casa Kane County. On Wednesday, March 17th at 9 a.m., 
We will have our human resource series with Valley Industrial Association targeting benefits, trends, and tips. On Wednesday, March 17th at 4.30 p.m., we'll have our Networking It, our virtual Irish edition, complete with a bagpiper. On Thursday, March 18th at 9 a.m., we have our Chamber Boot Camp series about Clubhouse, the new social media app that's taking, taking social media by storm. This is gonna be focused on Clubhouse for business. On Thursday, March 25th at 9 a.m. is our Chamber Bootcamp series, Role of a Leader in Times of Change. As always, I request that you follow the Chamber on Facebook and check, check the Chamber's website to stay informed. Go to bataviachamber.org to register for any of our events and sign up as a business or community member to find out other pertinent local community information. So thank you, City Council, for letting me talk to you about our upcoming events. Please join us. Uh, and now I would like to introduce our special, uh, my special guest, it's Stevie Hopkins. He is the owner of Second City Prince. Second City Prince is the best kept secret in the entertainment industry and is located right here in Batavia. Second City Prince has helped build some of the biggest merchandise brands in music and the entertainment industry by offering extraordinary creative and production services, hands-on account management, dedicated e-commerce integration and tour fulfillment. So now, Stevie, if you'd unmute, I'll turn it over to you. Hi, Marjorie, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, nice to meet everyone. I appreciate you guys having me. I just thought I'd come and say hello. And uh, Marjorie wanted me to give a little presentation about our business and what we've been up to the past few years, um, especially the last year. Um, I've been a business owner my whole life. I've lived in Batavia since in 1989, 1990, I've uh, been here a very, very long time. Uh, don't plan on leaving, um, but yeah, as Margaret said, I own Second City Prince. We um, are an international merchandising company uh, for the entertainment industry. Um, myself and my staff to work with people such as Billie Eilish, Carly Rae Jepsen, Keith Urban, uh, some of the biggest names in music and entertainment. Uh, when people hear that we're from Batavia, they're, they say often where all of my competitors are in Los Angeles or, or New York City. Um, and they're always very surprised that I'm not downtown Chicago. Um, but yeah, right here in Batavia, we're over on Olympic Avenue, um, Olympic Drive, sorry. Uh, I had a very, very tough decision to make uh, in the past year or two, whether we were going to stay here or whether we were going to split up and open multiple offices and warehouses all over the country. Um, I decided to just make everything a lot bigger right here in Batavia. And we uh, rented 130,000 square feet over on Olympic and we consolidated all of our production, all of our fulfillment, everything right there. Um, it's been really exciting. We're up to 174 employees um, and are projecting to hit nine figures revenue uh, next year or the year after. So it's in a really, really wild ride. Um, we're gonna be in Batavia for the long haul. And yeah, just really excited to, I don't know, sort of put Batavia on the map in the entertainment industry. So uh, we have a lot of our famous people. If you ever see a tour bus going down Redant or uh, down Kirk Road, they're most likely coming to our warehouse to pick up 30 pallets of merchandise. So. Uh, it's a really fun thing, and yeah, I'm just excited to do what I love, which is uh, create cool stuff and sell it to awesome people. So yeah, I don't think I have anything else more to do. I wasn't sure, but yeah, any questions? I'm, I'm here. So, do you have any questions for Stevie? Does he have a website or anything if we wanted to look at that to see if there was something that maybe we could use for other businesses in town might want to look at? Yeah, if you go to uh, www.second, S-E-C-O-N-D, city, C-I-T-Y, prints, P-R-I-N-T-S, uh, dot com, uh, everything on the website is pretty much targeted specifically to the entertainment industry, but we design and print for local businesses as well. We don't market it, but we do. Um, very proud that we do merchandise for uh, some of the elementary schools in town, as well as uh, Bolt Down Plumbing and Bare Feet Yoda and I think Power Moves is also in Batavia. I'm not an account manager anymore, so I don't know all of our customers, but we 
definitely design and print for a lot of local businesses and families. Thank you. And I, as mayor, I would just like to say that I'm very pleased to have Stevie and his company in our community. Uh, I've had the experience several times now where I've had people call the mayor's office and want to know where they can find you. And so uh, I, first time it happened, I believe I called Margaret's office and, and they were able to give me all the inside scoops on a telephone number and your email and everything. So uh, you do have people looking for you on a regular basis coming in and trying to find where you're at. And so uh, I think now we've got it down pretty pat. So uh, I appreciate you making this your home and uh, we are great to have the the entertainment industry in town. If you go out uh, East Wilson Street to 713 East Wilson Street, there's the house that uh, Sherry Meyer, when she was called that, lived in Batavia in the 1950s. She later changed her name to Jackie D. Shannon and won the Grammy Award in 1983. So we've got our share of entertainment right here, homegrown. So appreciate you uh, really f holding on and helping to expand the whole industry. So thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome, and thank you, I appreciate it. We also are awarding Stevie and his business with an Oli Award uh, because of his expansion and keeping his business in Batavia. So he will be honored at our Inspire Awards, which will be held on May 20th. So thank you, Stevie, thank you, Mayor, thank you, City Council. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving to item number 10, which is approval of Class L liquor license for HSRE Dial V T R S L L C uh, doing business as the Landing Senior Living Community located at 2401 Hawks Drive in Batavia. Who's got this one? I believe we have Chief Ewell on tonight. Okay. Alderman Chancet, do you have this? He have it or? Uh, I can certainly turn it over to. Uh, um, to uh, Chief. Okay. Uh, yes, this is the uh, Class L license that was recently created by the City Council for the accommodation facility uh, for the new senior living uh, community at 2401 Hawks Drive. Uh, we did conduct a background investigation on the uh, management team and found no reasons uh, not to grant them a Class L license in the city of Batavia. And I would just like to share that uh, Laura and I have had the opportunity to take a tour of this facility. It's the one as you go out for anybody that's trying to figure out what we're talking about here. This is a big complex that's just been built immediately to the west of the Walmart store on Fabian Parkway. And it's kind of built into what I would describe as the side of the hill. And there's a lot more to that building than what you, it looks pretty big on Fabian Parkway, but when you get in there and you go down into the ground and see all the unique features this thing has, including a three screen, three story high screen movie theater as you walk in the front door. Uh, it's very unique and I think it's going to be highly, when people get a chance to see it, there's gonna be a lot of uh, adulation for appreciation for what they've created out there. So uh, they are going to, they do have a, a restaurant that I guess is gonna have some limited ability for the public to come in and they're gonna have residents who want to have some kind of a refreshment so that's why they wanted to be totally legal and have a liquor license and so we kind of had to change things around here a little bit to include this type of use in our liquor code so uh, I would encourage our approval of this and who gets to make a motion here I'll make a comment on this too I've seen this on TV they've got actual commercials on TV right. for this complex and it looks looks very nice it's really a tr uh, contributes to Batavia very well yeah well, I'm gonna ask I think we asked if we can bring the City Council up yes. yeah. someday mm -hmm. so you all can see it personally right. they're just putting the finishing yeah they want to right. get everything finished up but we would like to get you guys in to see yeah it looks beautiful uh, what this thing is all about yeah, it's 141 units and it's the entire continuum of care so um, they have both um, you know independent living assisted living and memory care all in the same facility and they're doing a lot of very I think innovative things with regard to uh, care for their residents there and I think you're just gonna love it when you right. see it so somebody care to make a motion I'll, for the approval of this ordinance yes I'll, I'll make a motion 
I'll make a motion that we approve Class L liquor license application for HRSC Dial V TRS LLC DBA, the Landing Senior Living, located at 2401 Hawks Drive in Batavia, Illinois. Second. We have a move by Alderman Rosado, second by Alderman Wolf mm -hmm. uh, for the approval of the uh, <coughs> Class L liquor license. Uh, any further discussion? Kirk, call the bill. Rosado. Aye. Beck. Beck stepped out on this one. No, she's. Knopp. Yep. Aye. Chancet? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Meisler? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. So that one's approved 11 yes, one abstention, and two absent, correct? I think technically three yeah. absent. Well, three absent. Three absent. She's absent from okay, it. Okay, she's absent, all right. Because she's not on the not screen either. Not absent, so okay. Right. She's not checked in, so she'll, there she is. <laughs> and she's back. And Abby's she's back. back. <laughs> all right, uh, that's approved. Moving then to item number 11, <clears throat> which is ordinance 21-19, authorizing execution of a purchase and sale agreement for the purchase of real property comprised of 400 to 500 North Redant Road, Batavia, Illinois, and 901 Swanson Drive, Batavia, Illinois, identified by permanent index numbers 12-14-3402-020 and LN-12921. Oh, that's their cow number, so that's... So, uh, who's got this one? I can take that, Your Honor. Alderman Wolf. This is the uh, ordinance to set up a sale and purchase or a purchase and sale agreement for the property that we've been talking about for an expansion of the um, uh, the public works facility over on Redant Road. This is across the street, um, across Swanson Drive from the, the facility now. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any other questions or anything on it i know we got the number changed in the yes. ordinance so that we've got the correct uh pin number on there yes. for the property um, other than that this i think is an opportunity that none of us really thought about until it came available and you know it's something that we've those of us that have been here for a long time have known that there is an issue with space and that we've got things stored all over the city including buildings or things that should be in buildings that are actually stored outside of buildings so I think this is a very important thing that to take this opportunity. I also think it's something that for our community and speaking directly for the clothes closet and the food pantry, this is something that I think will give stability to those organizations <laughs> moving forward, um, especially in the time when we have had extreme explosion of service need from those facilities. And, you know, this is something that kind of goes behind the scenes um, in our community. And I think this would be a great place to locate that to make both pick up and drop off um, a little bit more private, but much more open and much easier to get to. I know that's kind of a strange way to put it, but that's the reality that I think a lot of people, when you have to avail yourself of services like that, don't want anybody to know that you're there. And I think this makes it much easier for that to take place. And I think that will make it a lot easier for people to feel okay about using the services that are there and i think it really provides you know a long-term solution for that so i'm totally in support of this and i think we should move forward uh, any questions of any yeah let, let me just add on a couple of things um, certainly i think this is one that certainly has to be a considered vote by all the members of the city council as to whether or not they feel that they should support this or not and i certainly can understand everybody's position from whatever way you're coming from i guess i look at this uh i look at our agenda tonight and after we get, get through with this one we've got uh, five new agendas uh, uh, five more items on the agenda which are all resolutions basically uh trying to uh or not not let's see one two three four yeah five five items on here doing tax abatements. Mm -hmm. And while this one is initially appears it's going to cost us some money and may have some impact on the tax bill, I think there's a few issues with this one that I would certainly like to highlight. Number one is this is basically a three-section building, and the plan is is that 
the public works gets a larger a large section of this building for their use and they need that right now given all the equipment and issues they are dealing with so we need to do something for public works to expand the second part of this will go to the food pantry and the clothes closet and the toy drive and those may in the case of the toy drive they may not be in there for the whole year but on the days when they do their distribution in december they are really trial go through a big trial of trying to deal with all these folks and this space would i think accommodate that very nicely but in the case of the toy drive and the food pantry and the and the clothes closet i mean i think those probably as a community speak to the caring heart that this community has gained a real strong reputation for and one that speaks to our ability as a town to go out and get a whole bunch of people to donate on an ongoing basis all kinds of food and supplies for these organizations and you know there's a lot of financial contribution to it although i would tell you that the financial contributions that come in probably have to go to running the business there and we don't have a big pot of money that we can use to throw into buying any buildings or anything but this is something that the uh, the community has been very supportive and generous of certainly our church community has rallied behind this and has been very supportive of it so uh, it's a good thing we've got going and i would hope that batavia could see the vision here to make this even better and make it easier and more accommodating for those who, who need it and as alderman wolf has just indicated with the pandemic and all the issues that surrounded that uh, we've seen a number of people who have been laid off of work and have an ability, inability to do feed their families and whatever. And this has been the saving grace on the street to have this facility. Right now, as you know, it's adjacent to our water treatment system down on South Shumway Avenue at Flynn Street. And uh, it's way overgrown at that facility down there and really needs to be put into a more permanent home. But I just think at the end of the day, this speaks to what Batavia truly as a town is all about and the heart and soul of it. And it makes us, I think, somebody that we can hold our heads up very high that we're here to take care of our own. And we're not obviously bringing in a whole bunch of people from outside of town. You got to live in Batavia to be qualified to come here and be serviced. But then beyond that, some of the golden hearts that we have that are working down there, both you know, volunteering and those who are employed in some form or fashion, are just a tremendous staff of people who really understand the heart and soul of people and understand when they are in need and you don't have to be there very long that you don't see that need really coming up and in, in into the face of everybody involved there so i like that and you know i like the fact that the third part of this building is this uh space that's going to be rented and that's going to generate a cash flow revenue for it so we're going to have some cash coming out that hopefully may be able to pay some of the debt for this thing. And then as I've already sh shared to the city council, we've got some other things in town that I think it's time that the city uh, cash out on. And one of them is we own what we believe will be about an 11 lot R0 subdivision out on West Main Street at the top of the hill going up the hill there across the street from Grace McQueen School. And that one is currently owned by the Batavia Utility or Public Works Department. And so now that they're getting this new building here, I hope we can work out something that most of the money we make off of that sale of that property, if we can find a quality home builder that wants to build 11 nice houses out there and put them on the tax rolls, uh, the money we get for the land, we can put a good portion of that toward keeping this debt of this down. Then we've got another piece of land that's immediately owned by the city. It's immediately to the south of the tower car wash on Main Street adjacent to the the, the kind of the uh, conservation area there that's at the east end of the Holy Cross Church parking lot. So we've got some things that we're going to be looking to sell and I would hope that those monies that are sold could be put toward this debt. And then as times march forward and I don't know, I don't think any of us know in two or three years what the finances of the city are going to be, but it would certainly be my hope that in a future meetings here when we have these resolutions abating uh, property taxes that maybe this one could be one that could be added to that list and that we would then not have this on the backs of any taxpayers it's not it's not going to be a lot of money in any way shape or form but it would be nice if we can find the revenues in the days coming forth here to uh, maintain it so that would be certainly my commitment to the community that we would try to do everything we can to keep the debt of this down and keep it in a comfortable level while at the same time 
showing with great pride the caring heart that this town has for people who are less fortunate than most of the rest of us. Yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. And one of the things I wanted to also bring up was, is, you know, if we don't have any of those other sales or anything happen, this is approximately a $2 a month um, tax increase for you know the general public. Um, one one thing that we did talk about at the uh, cow meeting that I should also bring up is if the money that we decide needs to be spent to do the upgrades around the building and you know out to access the building or anything on the building, if that comes up less than what we originally had planned, we will not bond out for more than what we need to do this and the um, the work on there. So, you know, the building we're buying for three five five. Mm -hmm. um, if we only spend five hundred thousand dollars to do what we need to do, that's all we're going to bond out for. If we spend seven hundred thousand dollars, that's the only amount we're going to bond out for. So, that's I think where I wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of that because I think this is something that we don't want to just say, hey, we're going to bond out for five million dollars and then whatever's left there, we'll find a place to spend it. That's not how I think we need to operate. Um, at this time, we, we have a real opportunity here, so I think we need to take advantage of it, but I don't think we need to go any further than that. So that's the reason, another reason why I'll support it. Does anybody else online have any questions like Alderman or any Meitzler comments? Alderman Meitzler has his hand up. Alderman Meitzler? Yep. Um, Thank you, uh, Your Honor. I'm I'm not going to support this. Um, I I I want to separate very clearly that um, this is not a purchase for the food pantry. I support the food pantry. I spent time at the food pantry donating that time to food pantry. This is not about the toy drive. I support the toy drive. We've donated to the toy drive every year, thanks largely in, in part um, you know, to Alderman Brown, uh, former Alderman Brown in the past, you know, really charging this council um, to donate to that uh, toy drive. I think it's phenomenal work that both of those organizations do. What this is about is should we bond out more than three and a half million unplanned for unbudgeted money should we bond out for that money knowing full well having just come out of the budget season we have a tremendous amount of capital improvement projects facing us and there were some very very tough arguments that we just had to get through where we really did not want to raise taxes because of the same people that have lost their jobs in our community that are facing very tough times. And so now we're still going to be faced with those capital improvement projects, but we're looking to spend an additional three and a half plus whatever it's going to take to make this building better up to $5 million. I just can't swallow that pill. I appreciate the efforts. I appreciate the proximity. I appreciate public works and their need for, for more space. But I cannot charge in good conscience more on the backs of the property taxes um, that it's going to take to bond this out. I just simply can't. So I'm a no. Thank you. Anybody else want to make any comments? There. Alderman, sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I echo a lot of what Elliot says there because this is. Um, this is one that I've gone back and forth on in my head a lot, um, and my vote has changed. I was a no, and then I was a yes last week in Cow, and and my mind could change by the time it gets around to me again. Um, and, and the one thing, the only thing I should say that is making me lean towards yes is the fact that this is something that, the more I thought about it, if we were to buy something later, it would cost more, and so that's the struggle I have. Everybody knows that I've fought and fought on minuscule items in the budget for years. And that's going to continue. And I just don't want to be also be in that position a couple of years down the line where we have to spend something and now it costs a lot more. So that's the only reason I'm leaning towards yes on this. I just don't want to be put in this position again. I know that this was a, hey, we weren't expecting and it kind of dropped in our lap. Um, but I want to make sure that we have discussions this year about absolutely everything that everybody thinks that they might want sometime in the next 20 years or more because we really need to know those things and we need to, we, we, talk, it, we talk the talk but we've never walked it where we say, okay, we are taking this money and putting it into another um, 
fund so that we have that money 20 years down the road. And we need to do that because I will not vote yes on another one of these things again if, if it just dropped in our lap like this. This is, this is the last time I will do that. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, I'll make the motion that we approve um, Ordinance 2119 authorizing execution of purchase and sale agreement for purchase of real property comprised of 400 to 500 North Redant Road, Batavia, Illinois, and 901 Swanson Drive, Batavia, Illinois. Identified by permanent index number 1214-3402-020. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Wolf, second by Alderman O'Brien for the approval of Ordinance uh, 2119. A court call the roll, please. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Meitzler? No. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Is that aye? I believe so. Yes, aye. Thank you. Miller? No. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? No. Chancet? Aye. Nine yes, three no. Motion is approved by a vote of nine yes, three no. Out there. Uh, I, this is I the talked to uh, Kevin Gunnell this afternoon, and we are looking at this goal would actually require a um, two thirds majority vote of 10 to be approved. However, since it does require more than a majority vote, we are entitled to vote on this matter to um, put this matter over to the 10th vote. Roman, um, there's a little bit of interference on your line. What I understood you to say was that uh, this requires a two thirds majority vote correct yes okay and so at nine to three that has been accomplished uh, it's not it we have to be of the of the four of the 14 of the entire city council okay not just the form of present but all 14 members okay well does the mayor get a chance to vote then yes he would i'll vote aye I think that does it. That, that would be, yeah, 10 out of 14 would be the majority. Yeah. Roman, did you hear me vote aye? I did. In, in your <laughs> agreement with what we just did? Yeah. It got approved? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. And then that just goes through, and now we have a, remind me, it's a 70 yes. day. Due, due diligence, diligence period and, and 30 then days to close 30 days to close so that's correct and we do want to get our due diligence done for the most part right. and also the estimates for More. construction yeah. that needed and the sidewalk etc um in that first 30 days right so, so then the bond issue can get done in the 60 days or whatever we think we need to do that so yes. that's the stages where we'll be going through for the next parts of this purchase so. And the bond will be brought to us to vote on that. That is correct. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. So, they're, they're, you know, that all that information comes back to us so we know exactly what dollars we're asking for mm -hmm. and what the reality would be yeah. if nothing else abates or, you know, takes away from the what we'd have to, to come up with from a yeah. um, bond issue. Right. Yeah. I just wanted to clear that to so people know mm -hmm. this is not a check writing night. This is just to take it to the next step. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that comes a little later. Yeah, I'll make another note on that. Uh, food pantry is paying for their build out, correct? That is correct. They are one hundred percent through their own donations and money. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. okay. they, they had been planning because they've been actively looking for a space for several years to try to find a bigger space because, like, the clothes closet, I think, actually stores seasonal items in different buildings because they just don't have enough room there. Right. So okay. uh, they do have funds available for that. And I think they did indicate that they are prepared to do what they think they need to do to, to build out there. Okay. And they'll take care of that. Right. Yeah, thank you for right. bringing that up. Yeah. I had mm -hmm. a couple of citizens call me the last couple of days saying they thought that the food pantry had the money to buy this. 
I mean, <laughs> physically buy the yeah. building. And I said, no, no, this is <laughs> just basically they got some money to remodel, but that's right. where that would that would stop at. So I, we need. I'm glad you brought that up. That needed to be cleared yeah. up. Yeah. So. And in all reality, too, I mean, I think this is a move moving forward. Say in 10 or 15 years, Public Works needs more space. The that would be the time when we just wouldn't renew a lease with a tenant if we needed the additional space. We wouldn't be going out to look for another building to buy or to build another right. building. We have it. We just have to repurpose it to our needs. Right. So. Okay, that one's done for the night. Uh, moving then to item 12, which is resolution 21-019-R, authorizing execution of task force order number two, phase two design, engineering services for Mahoney Creek Tributary Detention Basin with HR Green in the amount not to exceed $84,300. I've got this one, Your Honor, thank you. Wolf. All that explanation there um, really boils down to this is another step in working on Ward 1, the Mahoney uh, tributary to create a detention basin to try to take up for the huge surges of water that happened to go through that little tiny creek um, from Fabian Parkway or from Kirk Road all the way down to uh, the Fox River. So this is the, the detention basin. I believe this is all the way at the east end, Mike. Yes. Correct. Yes. So this is uh, to try to have a place for water to stay, so then it can be metered out of that in a normal way, so that it doesn't overflow the banks and everything else of the creek in that area and the park that's over there. So I think this is something that we committed to several years ago to make sure that we did everything we could to try to abate the problems that are there and make this not a problem or a lot less of a problem. Um, and this is the next step in that. You want to make any comments, Mike? I, I think you hit it, Alan. Uh, it's it's something since uh, you know we have these hundred-year floods every year, and then the people along this tributary that they they suffer through this. I mean, there's a lot of property damage, and and it's also to the Park District property that it flows through. There's, there's damage also. Uh, you know, it's it's a long time coming. We, we we approved it a long time ago. We wanted this done. I know Gary uh, Holm has been working hard on it with the, the other engineers, and uh, I think it, it's time has come, and it's not going to happen overnight. It's, this is just the first step, mm -hmm. and I, I hope you know, we don't lose sight that you know, there, there, is a, there is an end to this, and, and, and the end uh, should help a lot of residents in the first ward. And that's our main thing is we want to get this fixed, you know, and, and not just, you know, I know it's all steps and it all has to be done this way, but it needs to get done. I mean, it Absolutely. really needs to get finished. So. Yeah, when the flooding happens, it actually floods out one of our streets. Mm -hmm. That's very well traveled. You know, and, and I can I, attest to that. <laughs> I would just add that one of the components to this whole situation is our friends over at Fermilab, because they do do some discharging into this creek to themselves. Now with what's happening over there, I believe they're under agreement with us that they want, they were going to do some stuff on their side of the street that will basically mm -hmm. retain that water to a point in time when it's no longer going to be a problem for us to accept it. So right. there may be a, a new lake there on Kirk Road on the east side there for a while, but it'll be a nice attribute to have out there. And yeah. uh, Fermilab seems to be very agreeable to the idea. They understand what's going on there, but mm -hmm. it all runs right down those hills, right. right into that location. And I, I appreciate you bringing that up because Fermilab did step up and work with us on that. Right. And so, and then, you know, the drainage on Kirk Road, that the county, they, they just have poor drainage along Kirk Road. And in my conversations with them, they seem to think that, you know, what's all that's going on out there right now, and that what we got in Batavia is one of the biggest building projects in the state of Illinois right now is going on out at Fermilab with the Neutron Accelerator. And this is going to give them the opportunity to, to kind of refine and improve some things out there on their site that will blend right into this whole thing and, and make it, even that much better for them and for us and whatever. So it's a very cooperative venture. Yeah, they, they've, they've always proven over the years to be very good neighbors. Mm -hmm. They certainly are proving it now. So. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve resolution 21-19-R, um, authorizing execution of task order number two for phase two design engineering services for Mahoney Creek Tributary Detention Basin with HR Green in the amount not to exceed $84,300. Second. Moved by Alderman Wolf, second by Alderman O'Brien for the approval of resolution 
21-019-R, authorizing execution of the task order number two for phase two design on the Mahoney Creek Tributary in Detention Basin. Any further discussion? Her call the roll. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Meitzler? Aye. Malay? <coughs> Aye. Ewer? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. Chancet? Aye. That one's approved. Uh, 12 yes. 12 yes, no no's, and two absent. All right, uh, moving then to 13, which is the, this is always one of the nicer parts of the year when we can go through this list and abate all these taxes. I, I'm always very proud of the city and specifically our city staff and administration for keeping a watchful eye on all this because there, I will tell you, I get to talk to a lot of mayors and most of the rest of us don't get to do this. And uh, we've been able to do it in Batavia. I, I look at these here tonight and one, 16 is the one where we're gonna bait almost $700,000 uh, using sales tax revenue for the fire station bonds that were issued when we tore down and rebuilt the two fire stations. And as most of you remember that bond issue that we went to referendum <coughs> about was approved because it was a sales tax increase. And the people of Batavia agreed to that and said that we committed that that sales tax would be used to pay those bonds down and you know, as I remember, that was about 11, over $11 million in total construction that we did on those two buildings. And we're, I don't think we've missed a payment yet, and it's all been paid for by the sales tax. So I appreciate the home rule power that we had that allowed us to have that sales tax put into place. And I've been, I was asked recently to come over to the city of Westchester and tell that story to a debate they were having in town about whether or not they should invoke a home rule sales tax in Westchester. And I said, well, Here's a good example of something where government does work and, you know, a lot of that sales tax is coming from people who don't even live in town. They're just inside town buying groceries or gas or whatever, and they're generating the money help to spend the money for us. So mm -hmm. uh, that was a win-win-win. The referendum in that night, I remember, passed well over 65% of the people in town voted for that referendum. So mm -hmm. that was a nice one. You know, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I hope the... Uh the, the residents of the Batavia recognize the fact that, you know, yourself and, and past councils, this council, with these abatements, that they, they're keeping their eye on the ball and, and trying to control the, the taxes that we're, we're placing upon people. That's the big idea. All right, enough conversation. Anybody else have any comments they want to make? <laughs> okay, let's go then to uh, 13, which is... Uh, Resolution 21-014-R 2020 tax levy abatement abating $396,598 in the tax levy with water utility revenues. Somebody want to make that? Alderman Wolf, do you hand, are you going to handle these? I think it's Alderman, Alderman Chanzit. Chanzit has them in government. I think it's Chanzit. What? Chanzit. Chanzit. Chanzit's got all these. I prepared all day. I rehearsed all day for these speeches. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to take your thunder away from you. <laughs> That's fine. No worries. <clears throat> uh, the first one is for uh, water and sewer revenue. Um, so moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Chancet. Second by Alderman Wolf for the approval of <clears throat> resolution 21-014-R for... Uh, tax abatement of $396,598 from water utility revenues. Her call the roll. Chancet? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Meitzler? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. Resolution 21-014-R is approved by vote of 12 yes, no no's, and two absent. Moving to 14, which is resolution 21-015-R, 2020 tax levy abatement, abating $1,492,350 in the tax levy with 
util electric utility revenues? Alderman Chancet. So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Chancet, second by Alderman Wolf for the approval of Resolution 21-015-R. Uh, 2020 tax levy abatement in the amount of $1,492,350 from electric utility revenues. Clerk, call the roll. Chancet? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Meitzler? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. Resolution 21-015-R is approved by a vote of 12 yes, no no's, two absent. Moving to 15, which is Resolution 21-016-R, 2020 tax levy abatements, uh, abating $411,056 of tax levy with general re fund revenue for stormwater bonds. Alderman Chancet? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Chancet, second by Alderman O'Brien for the approval of uh, Resolution 21-016-R, 2020 tax, tax levy abatements uh, for $411,056 uh, for tax levy for the general fund for stormwater bonds. Uh, I just want to make a note, note on this that uh, this represents several different times when the city of Batavia had some real bad problems with houses getting flooded and we, we've back in 96 we had the infamous 26 inches of rain or whatever it was and uh, that pointed out where all the bad points were and as most of you remember we went around and corrected most of those and that's where this money probably went a long way toward helping to pay that so again uh, it never got thrown on the backs of the of the property taxpayers but we did resolve a whole bunch of water going in the wrong places for quite a while. Uh, clerk, call the roll then, please, on Resolution 21-016-R. Chancet? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Meitzler? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. Resolution 21-017-R is approved by a vote of 12 yes, no no's, two absent. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, that was 1-6, not 1-7. Okay, moving to 16, which is Resolution 21-017-R, 2020 tax levy abatement in the amount of uh, $695,850 uh, tax levy with sales tax revenues for the fire station bonds. Alderman Chancet. So move. Second. Moved by Alderman uh, Chancet, second by Alderman, was it Miller? Wolf. Wolf, Wolf. okay. Uh, for the uh, abatement of Resolution 21-017-R for the tax levy for the revenue for the fire station bonds. Any further discussion? Her call the roll. Chancet? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Meitzler? Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. Resolution 21-017-R is approved by a vote of 12 yes, no no's, two absent. And finally, 17, which is Resolution 21-018-R, 2020 tax and levy abatement, abating $259,111 tax levy, with water utility revenues. Alderman Chancet. So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Chancet, second by Alderman O'Brien for the approval of Resolution 21-018-R, uh, tax levy abatement of $259,111 using water utility revenues. Any further discussion? Kirk, call the roll. Chancet. Aye. Wolf. Aye. Barron. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Meitzler. Aye. Malay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. That was again 12 yes, no no's, two absent. Motions approved. Okay, moving to 18, the administrator's report. Thank you, Your Honor. 
Um, this past week, staff met with Main Street to plan for the layout of the uh, farmer's market and talk a little bit about what uh, outdoor dining will look like this year. Um, given that we're um, still waiting for the IDOT response, we had to talk in terms of contingencies because we don't know whether we will uh, have received the one-way um, permit by then, and so we would have to apply um, to close the street as we did in the same manner as last year in the meantime until that comes through. So it was good to meet with them to um, just get some ideas out there about how we would ha handle that. But Main Street is very much in favor of continuing to have at least part of the farmer's market on North River Street. Um, I've begun discussions with the executive director of the Batavia Public Library about forming a team to create a historic landmark placking um, project this year. And we would also work on that with the Batavia Historical Society as well as the Depot Museum. Um, the Parklet Pedlet Ordinance was discussed at last week's COW, and I've been working on putting together the ordinance for that. I think I'll have that back for the um, Committee of the Whole meeting next week. Um, we expect that a new submittal for the Landsmeyer Farm on McKee Street, that's the formerly was known as the Winding Creek um, Project, and, and maybe still is, we'll find out. Um, but that's gonna be a very nice addition of a subdivision in a city where we really don't have that much open green space um, where we're adding subdivisions like that. So it will be very good to get that underway. The city is advertising for bids to demolish the city-owned house at 916 Park Street on uh, March 1st with bids due by March 31st. We're advertising for a company just to come in and do all of the remaining work that is necessary up to and in including uh, demolition of that property. Um, and then also with the Amendments to the Wage and Salary Policy now approved this evening. We'll be advertising for the Economic Development Manager position. In Public Works, survey crews were on site last Friday to gather information in support of the city's concept submittal to IDOT for a new pedestrian crossing at Wilson and South River Street. And then also just a message from the police department. Uh, unfortunately, the Fox Valley region has recently been the target of some auto parts thefts. We've seen uh, pop up in the dailies, especially catalytic converters. And um, key target areas are like larger parking lots um, in industrial areas. Offenders crawl underneath the parked cars and remove the vehicle's existing converter with a saw or other cutting tool. So just trying to alert people to, if they see suspicious activity like that in our industrial areas, to maybe uh, give a call to the police department and let them know um, that you see that. I, I'd just like to wrap up today, encouraging everybody to uh, support our local restaurants who will be participating in uh, Restaurant Madness Weeks, the, uh, starting on uh, Sunday, March 14th, and then the Thursday, it's uh, Sunday through Thursday of that week, as well as Sunday through Thursday of the following week. And they're doing it a little bit different this year in that you get 10% off of your food bill, but you also get a coupon to be used in the month of April for uh, any of the restaurants as well. So it uh, definitely help our restaurants who have suffered uh, so much this year. Um, locally, I think Batavia has really come through for them on the, um, the uh, program that was we side with the Batavia restaurants and thanks to the city council members who worked with Main Street and the chamber to put that program together. It's been very supportive for a hard hit segment of our business community. And that's all I have unless anybody has any questions for me. Any questions of the administrator? All right, uh, committee reports. Uh, city services, Alderman Wolf. Um, just a reminder again to make sure that the drains stay open in the street as everything melts off and debris starts to flow down the curbs and into the, the drains, make sure that those stay open so we don't end up with any flooded <coughs> streets. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and brush pickup starts middle of this month. 
Or is I, it yard waste that starts middle of this month? I think it's yard waste. The, they're, they're on the website. Make yes. sure that you check that before you start making piles of stuff out in your front yard. So Thank you. I want everybody to be ready for that. Okay, public utilities, Alderman O'Brien? Uh, nothing to report, Your Honor. Uh, anybody have anything under community development in the absence of Alderman Callahan? I don't think we have any. And um, I'm missing one here. Chancet. Chancet. Yeah, Alderman Chancet, Government Services. Do you have anything? He stepped away. So. <laughs> uh, going to, to uh, other business, do we have any other business from the council? Your Honor. Um, one good thing I saw that we made the, the post, I don't know the specifics of it yet, but within the next probably week or so we should have the schedule out and BATV will be covering football games for the uh, Bulldogs when they start their spring season. <laughs> I don't think I would ever say that, but spring football is about to happen in, in How many games Illinois. in total are they going to I think we're only going to have six, six games. Who chimed in? Six, yes. <laughs> Joe knows. The referee. <laughs> the referee knows, right? There's yep. three, three in town and three out of town. Is that what we're I doing? believe that's what we're going to do. I haven't seen the schedule again because it's changed so many different times. Um, one of the issues, we were going to try to do basketball, but because they were limited how many people could be inside and depending on where the gyms were, they limited it even more because there just really wasn't any space to keep people apart from each other and away from the players because they have to use one set of stands just to keep the players apart from each other. I don't know how that's going to work in football if they're just going to have them all down spread out on the field, um, but it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve because we may actually do this remote. We may actually have the camera operators out there just to limit the people there and we may be in the studio actually calling the game from the studio. So you didn't do any basketball? We, didn't, we haven't done any basketball games. They've done them on YouTube. I think finally there's a link for a um, an online service that's doing the games. I know the other night when we beat Geneva, which was great, um, they uh, had that uh, that was online, not only on, on YouTube, but a lot of the games, especially a lot of the girls' games, have all been just on YouTube. Um, some of them have been Facebook Live so that it, you know you can see them when you can't get there. Um, basically, what they've done with basketball, I think, is they can only allow 50 people in the stands, and you have to be a parent of one of the players to get into the building. So hopefully we will be out uh, bringing it to everybody so everybody can see it this, this year. they got a really good team. All right. Sorry to hear that. I wish that there were some way we could allow them to get broadcast more because that that really yeah. does. I, I know there's. I've had a lot of people tell me well, I really yeah. miss watching those games and mm -hmm. being at them and all this other stuff. Well, it keeps people con in contact with it and they feel you know connected right. to the town that they love. Right. Mm -hmm. And you guys really do a yeah. professional it's job of broadcasting it. So you've really made it. You got a big fan club out. We have replay now too, so mm -hmm. I, again, we get to use our replay, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> Anybody else got anything? Well, I want to just take a minute here because there is the big question, probably of the decade, maybe of the century. I don't know. Has been floating around Batavia for the last almost year about this whole pandemic, and specifically now the shots. And I will tell you, in my many years as mayor of this town, I have never, ever, ever been asked more times about any one subject than I have about this one. And, you know, sometimes easily 100 different people a day will ask me questions about. It outdoes chickens? What? It outdoes chickens? Oh, it blew chickens. For <laughs> okay. So, uh, basically, last night, uh, this, I, you know, you have to appreciate this. This is not restricted to Batavia. So last night, uh, Mayor Lightfoot in Chicago decided she was going to entertain a regional conversation about it with the area mayors. And the mayors were all invited to tune in on this. Now they, they didn't turn the mic on on everybody because it, it was restricted to an hour conversation, which was supposed to be specifically the dissemination of information as to how things are going and where things are going to go and whatever. And so uh, all the mayors, I think almost everyone was on, on this call listening. And uh, I was part of a planning circle on this thing, so I didn't talk, but I got quoted several times about questions that I had raised about 
you know, how these shots were being given and whatever have you. Uh, basically, what's happened here is, is that now I think it, from what we heard last night, there's a belief that finally the volume of vaccine coming into the state of Illinois is going to be at a pace where they're going to be able to start really to shoot a lot of people. But, you know, they've restricted it, as you know, to these various categories and groups, and there's many of us have still never had a shot yet, and uh, probably the vast majority of Batavia has not had a, had a shot, as all the other mayors said the same thing. Uh, so one of the things that happened here is, is that early on, the retail world got themselves into the vaccine receiving. And so they started setting this up, and there was a lot of, it's now been pointed out, there was a lot of different ways that they were doing this. And some wanted you to join a club, and others wanted you to come to a store that wasn't maybe as busy as some other store so they could bring some business in. So as a result of that, we've had Batavia people, uh, the elderly specifically, uh, were told, well, you can get a shot, but you got to go to Chicago. Or you want a shot, you got to go to Rockford. Or you want a shot, and there's a whole bunch that went down to the south suburbs to Palos Park and Hickory Hills, in South Chicago Heights and all these places. And so all this is going on, and in the meantime, finally, as Lightfoot told, told us last night, the city has grabbed the shots and they're keeping the, the vaccine for themselves, and they're gonna take places like the United Stadium, which they hope to be able to do 6,000 people a day in. And so uh, I will tell you that in the last week, our newly elected Kane County Board Chairman Corinne Pirog has been working very diligently to get Kane County its own control over these shots. And uh, she's picked out a couple of places in the county for this to be, and one of them may very well be in Batavia. And the staff and myself have been cooperating very strongly with her, and I don't have any positive program to tell you, well, it's gonna be here for sure, it's going to be at this location, uh, but we kind of think we know where it's going to be. Uh, the police department's looked at it. Uh, I think as you give these shots, what I guess one of the things you try to do is control the turnout of the flow so that you suddenly don't have 3,000 people in cars at the doorstep wanting to have a shot. So I, I'm thinking that this may very well be, well, you're in the category now that you can get the shot, you call and make an appointment. And then you go and maybe there'll be 50 other people there with you, but you'll you know, it's not like you just run in and do it. Now, the shots don't cost anything. That's one nice thing about it as far as you receiving one. It's going to cost some money to run it. Uh, but I, I, as soon as I know for sure that we're going to do this in Batavia, and I think there's a good chance we are going to, uh, I will be putting out a memo to each and every one of you. And the one thing I will tell you that I've suggested that we may be willing to do, I hope you would be going along with me, is that we may need to electrify some building someplace and keep it lit and keep power in there if they need to have some cooling or they need anything else going on. And I've indicated that I was going to come to the city council and ask you to, that the city of Batavia would cover that electric bill from off our own utility if, if in fact it's in Batavia. I think just given the number of our people who need it and want it, uh, I think that's a small price to pay for our contribution <laughs> to this whole thing. So you may be getting me asking you probably, hopefully, maybe at the next meeting to come in and vote to approve a, a spot where we can, you know, disseminate and the city will donate the electricity for that particular building where that happens at. So I just wanted to put you all on notice. I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm not trying to be coy here with you. you most of you can probably figure out where this is. But I don't want to say it yet because it's not a sure deal. I know I can tell you there are negotiations going on, the negotiating lease, and we're not paying that. But mm -hmm. the, but the, we will donate the electricity, and uh, we've done that before for other needy things that have happened over the years that we've done stuff for. So, uh, can we get the kids out at Portillo's and Chick Fil A drive-throughs to help run it so that they can just move people through like <laughs> as fast no, as can that, be? That's good. Trust me, trust me. That's the idea. In the, the to the credit of the police departments in in Kane County, they've already. I think the chiefs have already met and discussed things mm -hmm. about you know if you need help on a day if you're getting overwhelmed mm -hmm. with traffic. 
this department will send two squads or wh wherever it is, it's all going to be, you know, let's, let's all help each other and kind of a mutual aid type of thing. So, uh, but, you know, that is the one issue that really has a lot of people very uptight about it. And so I, I think we want to do everything we can to get this out into the public and get it going and get it out so everybody knows that there's days coming when they can get their shot and we can get everybody taken care of. And uh, I appreciate, you know, the fact that now we're, we now have three providers for shots and the federal government seems to be screaming and howling at everybody to get these on the street. So we want to be in a position where we kind of make it a public distribution, not necessarily a, a business plan type situation, because that's where we started getting into this. I, t I don't want to name names here, but I got to tell you, we've got a couple of citizens in this town. I know of one who has great skills with the computer. It's a gal, and she ended up probably, I would tell you, she, she found locations for maybe well over 100 people senior citizens in Batavia that needed a shot and needed it pretty badly. And she then she ran in, she called me, and we, we I called her, I guess, I don't forget. She's an old friend of mine. And she said that, you know, there's some of these people who are 98 years old and they need to go to DeKalb to a, someplace mm -hmm. to get this shot, and they don't have any way to get there. So I get on the phone with John Dillon from RSVP, and right away we found drivers and people rose to the occasion, and we got... We got a bunch of people that were in really bad ways here taken care of. And all this was done, nobody got paid nothing. It was all volunteer, strong citizens standing up and looking out for others. And it just made you proud to be a resident of this town when you saw how well some of these people stood up and really helped others out. And so uh, I just, I think out of all the darkness and problems this has been, there's been some good showing here and it's really, brought the best in some people out and really made us shine. So I really wanted to commend all those in the community who were doing it. And I want to thank Laura. She's been beating the heck off of this thing by all the people calling up here all through the day. The rece our reception is out at the front desk yeah. to answer the phone call. Those poor gals. Mary. And, you know, they all think we got the answer. And, you know, as a government, I guess we should try to have the answer, but we didn't have it as good as I now think we may have it as far as their ability to get everybody shot up and taken care of with vaccine. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it has been a very struggling time. As I say, I've never seen anything quite like it, and I doubt whether we will ever see one again. I know there are some people in, t in toward the city that are sitting there apparently keeping track of everything on a day-to-day -day basis with the idea that they're going to write some kind of a regional history about this experience and what went right and what went wrong so that in futures, if something, God forbid, like this happened again, there would be, you know, someplace you could refer to what went right, what went wrong, how we got things better treated and acted upon. And so we uh, were using it, I think, to, to better ourselves in the future generations. But this has been a monumental thing as far as the number of people. Because you literally, as I would tell you, you got this in everybody's face, one way, whether they're old or young or whatever age they are. Everybody felt threatened and rightfully so by it. And, you know, we, I guess we identified the most threatened, and those were the ones we're taking care of first. But the idea is to give it to everybody. And then the other surprising thing is that there's an, a pretty good sized number of people that don't want no shot. You know, they're afraid of it or say they think they've beat it already or whatever their issues may be. So not, not everybody's going to take it. I can tell you that. There's some that say, I want nothing to do with it. And so, uh, but the, I would say the vast majority are very much into shots. So we'll see where that goes. But I just want to let you know, you know, that we're, we're having these conversations and we're working very closely with the county to work with them to get some shot locations set up for vaccine to be distributed. And uh, we're hoping to do that in the next few days, hopefully. So... Uh, the other thing I just want to publicly thank is that we had a number of volunteers from the Batavia Fire Department last week went out once, from the, once the east side station and the west side station. They went out and they perused every known fire hydrant coming out of the ground. And if it was under, under snow, they, they stopped the truck and got out and dug that hydrant out. And we had a map. We have a map in the truck that shows you where so they knew where they were going. 
but they found quite a few that really, you know, because they sit right next to the curb, so when the snow plows come by, they get hit with the big wad of snow, and suddenly they're buried underneath, and you don't know they're there. And, you know, so it's good to have those all totally cleaned out, and they did it when the snow was still pretty deep, but we got them all uncovered for us. So I just wanted everybody to know that was, not every tit city did that, but that shows you the quality of the firemen that we have in this town, so. Mm -hmm. No further business. Uh, Alderman Wolf, you want to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Moved by Wolf, second by O'Brien. Kirk, take a voice vote, I guess, or do we have to have a roll call? I think we can do a voice vote. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.